northern Russia, Lake Manichkadilo. Early morning is the best time for setting out for this small island from the mainland. This is because gale force winds blow here throughout the rest of the day. Dr. Vladimir Kazmin, a biologist, is going to the deserted island of Vodny, the lake's most mysterious feature. It is couched in incredible legends and is the custodian of many secrets. When and how it became home to a herd of horses is unclear. Because of its population of noble beasts, Vodny has since been called Mustang Island. Today, it is part of Europe's only nature reserve in the steppe. Dr. Kazmin hopes to be able to get close to the Mustangs to see how these feral descendants of domesticated horses live in the wild. Here we are. Good luck and Godspeed. Hope you find those horses. Thank you for the ride. When I find them, I'll be sure to let you know, okay? Bye for now. Manich Gudilo is one of Europe's longest lakes with a high concentration of salt. It stretches all the way from the Russian plain to the Caucasus Mountains as it runs through the Kuma Manich Depression, a natural border between Europe and Asia. There are no freshwater reservoirs, rivers, or springs on Vodny Island because of the salinity of the soil. Consequently, there are no trees or shrubs there either. The island is overgrown with low grass. Summertime here is marked by scorching heat droughts and strong winds. The horses have a hard time surviving in such conditions. Dr. Kazmin confirms. This here is the skull of an adult horse. It belonged to a female. It died from natural causes. No trace of hooves is found in the sand. There are no trails leading to the horse ponds. The salt makes the lake's water undrinkable. The horses can only survive on the island's hinterland, where rain accumulates in small depressions in the earth. Dr. Kazmin soon finds a narrow trail in the grass. This is a horse trail. Similar trails take horses to a watering place. That said, even tulips grow on such trails. The horses tread on them, but they don't trample them down. Some 150 species of tulip are found in the wild. This flower with a short stem and bright cup of a bud gave birth to the first cultivated varieties of tulips. This is the wild shrinker tulip. Once a year, the islands, open spaces, and low hills of the Rostov Nature Reserve flare up in a riot of color. People often ask why the tulips are so short. That's because the bulb of a tulip lays deep underground at a depth of about 70 centimeters. Even a plow won't remove it. It's under no threat at all. The wild tulip has always been a native plant of Russia's steppes. In the past, it was a symbol of vitality and fertility. Unlike the bulbs we may buy for our gardens, these tulips start life as small seeds. Years will pass before the buds emerge above ground. Tulips take seven years to come up. Thin petals are the first to appear. They look like the petals of this tulip. They don't bloom until they are at least six years of age. The tulip is one of the few flowering plants that are comfortable in open, arid areas. In geological terms, the so-called managed depression is an almost ideal plain, with small lakes two to three meters deep. Fish and weeds are not found in them because it's too salty. Colonies of microscopic crayfish, called brine shrimps, lend the water its reddish hue. They are common in salt water. 
and are most likely to be the only inhabitants. The horse trail on Vodny Island takes Dr. Kazmin to what is now a small dried out lake. What makes the Rostov Reserve different is that this island is surrounded by a salt lake. It's called Manich Gudilo. This is one of the lake's bays. The water is very salty. The horses don't drink such water. Vladimir is a seasoned explorer. Trails are not his only guide. I don't think a horse's smell could be mistaken for anything else. I would say that it is very distinctive. They must be somewhere here nearby. The free-roaming Mustangs on Vodny Island are in total isolation. Locals have another theory as to how the horses came to Lake Manichgadilo. In the old days, robbers stole horses in neighboring villages and hid them there. To this day, the horses are still mistrustful of people. The island is now closed to tourists and only researchers can visit. Yet few have been able to approach the stallions let alone get inside the herd. Here they are. These are the horses we have spent ages looking for. There are eight young colts. These free-roaming horses are called mustangs. I can see the horses grouping together, ready to head off. At dawn tomorrow, they will be much calmer, and then we will be able to take a look at life inside the herd. Look, they're off into the sunset. From time immemorial, horses helped humans survive in these austere regions. Nomads regarded this open space in Europe's south as a highway linking Europe and Asia. Over the ages, many ethnic groups inhabited these parts, including Scythians, Pechenegs, Khazars, Tatars, and Mongols. In the old days, a horse was a status symbol. Only warriors and the elite could afford to keep such mounts. The camel was the most common domesticated animal among ordinary folk. Camels were used in every way possible. They were harnessed to carry loads, and they were used for meat and wool. They were used a lot. Both the staff of the Rostov Reserve and researchers from the Biodiversity Conservation Center have come up with a project to keep what were once native animals in the steppe. This small herd of camels graze during the day and return to an open pen for the night. The camels like it here and are only too happy to give up the open wild in exchange for food and water. They have easily adapted to living in the steppe. One of the signs of healthy camels is upright rather than crumpled and drooping humps. Camels rapidly multiplied in this small herd. They have a hierarchy. Meat camels obey strong males. Some of the males are very aggressive. They have to be removed from the herd to ensure the comfort of others. This is especially important at a time when there are many young camels around. We protect them from aggressive males, but otherwise old and young alike coexist peacefully.
Vladimir Kazmin has devoted his life to studying horses. So much so that his friends and colleagues gave him the nickname Old Mustang. For quite some time, Vladimir has conducted research on his own. This is because wild horses dislike the presence of many people on the island. Dr. Kazmin lives a hermit's life. All he needs in the steppe is water and packed meals. He stays in a dilapidated cabin for the night, the island's only structure. We constantly observe the Mustang's way of life. We are looking for opportunities to create isolated territories for them, so they can feel themselves at home without being bothered by humans. The buds of wild tulips in the Rostov Reserve open with the first rays of the sun. The Schrenker tulip blooms for only a few days. This brief period is known in the reserve as red carpet time. In the morning, Vodny Island surrounded by fog. Dr. Kazmin knows for sure that the herd is nearby. In the morning, they are most likely to be either in the depressions or at the water hole. This behavior is characteristic of all animals roaming around the steppe. Early in the morning, they feed on moist grass. At this time, the plants are rich in moisture, and there is also a lot of dew here. This meets their water requirements. Over the years on the island, the herd's behavior has become quite varied. Typical of all free-roaming animals, it's up to the alpha male to decide where the herd goes at any particular moment. But even without a leader, the horses follow their natural instinct to flock together as they move around the island. As soon as a small group of horses begins moving, the others gradually join in. For most of the year, the Mustangs live in a type of harem. There are three to four mares with colts in each of them. Each harem has a leader. He knows which mares are his mates and does his best to protect them against harassment. Stallions may kick up a fight even if one of them unintentionally trespasses on the territory of another family. The Mustangs on the island have no enemies. Wolves can't get here because it's too dangerous for them to swim. Even feathered predators never nest here. They prefer other islands. Migrating birds fly over Lake Manich Gadilo on one of the longest flight paths in Eurasia. The lake is now a protected area. Thousands of waterfowl nest on the lake's small islands. Pribrezhny Island is home to the largest colony. A rigid hierarchy is typical here, just as it is of the Mustang herd. Caspian gulls dominate the island. These brave birds are omnivorous. 
They eat plants and mice. This helps them survive in any conditions. They're so fearless that they can drive even humans away. There are no fish here. Therefore, they need to feed on lizards in the field or pick up bread and meat from garbage cans. That's why the gull has become such a common bird at Lake Manij Godila, and not only here, but throughout the south. The gull colony is the largest. Seagulls nest in the grass or on the shore. Other birds never fly over this part of the island. Even black-headed gulls stick together and steer clear of the noisy flock of Pribrezhny Island. Whenever they see Caspian gulls approaching, they immediately leave their nests. But it's the spoonbills which stand out here. Pribrezhny Island forms the northernmost border of their habitat. These birds have peculiar looking beaks. They rarely go up in the air. They prefer to hunt for small crayfish close to the shore. They are timid birds. They have spoon-like bills because they eat crustaceans. There is an abundance of crustaceans in Lake Manij Kudila. Cormorants are the only birds that feel safe on the island. They build their nests away from the gulls to form what might be described as bird settlements. The self-preservation instinct tells the cormorants to build their nests high above ground to protect their young from a sudden flood or a fox. Small predators get to the island when parts of the lake dry up in the heat. When this happens, the seagulls come to the rescue. When one fox comes around, hundreds of seagulls attack and kill it. We have seen foxes, skulls and skins. On one occasion, a steppe eagle turned up here. Hundreds of gulls knocked it down into the water. The eagle got wet and the birds finished it off right there and then. The mating season on Pribrezhny Island has come to an end. The colony's birds have laid their eggs and are waiting for the young to hatch. As time goes by, the Mustangs get used to the lone explorer and take less notice of him. Dr. Kazmin walks slowly and quietly and pauses on the trail. The horses can hear the slightest noise. They have the ability to turn their ears backwards. These here are two mares and two colts. That stallion is running after them. It wants to take them to an isolated place where they can feed in peace. It's not quite clear when the first horses settled on the island. The locals were aware of the wild herd back in the early 20th century. And local stories passed through the ages suggest that robbers in times gone by used to steal stallions and mares from nearby villages and hide them on the island. They believe that those horses are the ancestors of the modern-day Mustangs. Scientists have found some evidence in support of this theory. The wild horses of Vodny Island appear to have all the distinctive features and characteristics of the Russian Don breed, which was bred in the Don region a hundred years ago. In 1995, Vodny Island became part of the Rostov Nature Reserve. Today, the free-roaming herd is under protection. But there was a time when the horses were under threat from invading poachers.
Poachers would come when the horses were unprotected. At the time, one of the stallions, called Baron, often stood watch on high ground to get a good view of the island. As soon as he sensed danger, he alerted the herd. The horses saw Baron as their leader. Even though he had a family of his own, all the other horses followed his command because they knew that Baron had saved them from approaching poachers many times before. Dr. Kazmin has learned much about the Mustangs after spending several days with them. The main leader is no longer in the herd. It now consists of 18 families, all on equal terms. It includes 323 adult horses and 18 colts. These are critical figures for their survival. If their population grows, the Mustangs may run out of food. Mustangs absolutely love cereal crops. They can't live without them. As long as there aren't too many horses here at any one time, there's more than enough food to go around. Fresh water is a constant issue for the Mustangs. The morning dew is not enough to sustain them. At noon, the herd relaxes under the heat of the sun. Towards sunset, the Mustangs head to their drinking place. The one nearest them has dried up, but there is still some cool water at the bottom. This is the best place for them to rest before the herd sets out on a long journey to the other end of the island where there is still rainwater in small pools. It is great that nature created this island away from the mainland. Here the horses can lead a happy life. Thousands of years ago, their predecessors were here. This is a getaway, a secret place for them, the island of Mustangs.